in part two, we discuss how you can feel worthless as a parent when your kids are struggling as a couple of Robert's kids were, and his daughter begins to heal. Imagine a conscious contact with God so strong that no matter what you are doing or not doing, that no matter what your kids are up to or not up to, and that whether you've got the person of your dreams or they're just not cooperating, that you are happy, content, and at peace. A space where everyone else's thoughts, attitudes, and actions are beautiful and exactly as they are supposed to be. Well, this is the space where I like to play. My name is Misha Z, and this is today's Bitch Slap. Join me as I shed light on the thoughts, actions, and attitudes that are causing you pain, and we train our minds to go to the capital S inner self, the joy that is waiting for us, the God within. From when we talked the other day, I wrote down a few things and, um, and I wrote down uh, four kids, two shiny, two troubled. (laughs) And I wrote, right. And I I wrote as a parent, because you have four kids. Tell me what their ages are today. Just quickly. How old are your four kids today? Uh, 21, 20, 18, and 16. And the, and the, the, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Okay, perfect. And then I and and I'm, I'm going to say they're they're all shiny. Um, yes. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I so, mean, in the yes, yeah. and they're all beautiful. Right to get to that point where it's they're all beautiful for who they are is magical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There, there's the illusion that if all my kids just came out great, whatever that means, right? There's that moment as a parent. Well, I'll speak for me. Right. Where yeah, yeah. The, the things aren't the going the way I want. Right. So yeah. so perhaps we would say <laughs> how about it's, this? Too shiny and too shiny and troubled. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there and go. and I wouldn't even say trouble that's more just needing a little uh a little help on their journey, you know. Mm, I and, love that. You know, and some some journeys are a little more traditional uh from a societal standpoint, and yeah. other journeys are not. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know for me, my journey was not that uh, traditional. I mean, I didn't go back. I didn't go to college till I was 25. I yeah. had a, a different career that led me traveling and doing things. And, you know, I was yeah. successful. I was fine. But I, you know, at the, you know, both my parents went to college and I'm sure they wanted me to go right from high school to college. I did. Yes. Um, yes. But I did eventually go and, and uh, I didn't graduate till after I was 30 and from college. Yeah. Um, and so I look at my kids and my two, so my oldest is in traditional college, you know, he wants to be a a commercial pilot. He's in an aviation program and, uh, he loves what he does. He's, he's an Eagle scout. (laughs) You're going to tear me up because I just love my kids. I love, um, I love bragging about him. So, and he's, he's, he's just amazing. You know, um, my daughter is just, you know, so she's doing online learning. She's a Starbucks employee and taking advantage of ASU online, which is a free program. And uh, she's going to be a data scientist. I mean, all my kids have done well in school. We have a really geeky yeah. household. If you ask them, they could all recite 100 digits of pi just because I joked about it one day. <laughs> and when they were like seven, we started memorizing digits of pi. And they, yeah. every year on march 14th they would each bring home a pie from school because that's what they do in school now so. oh my gosh that's <laughs> so incredible some of those things are worthwhile um so uh and then my son who now works full-time and and i i'm and he's super bright i think he's probably the brightest of all of them i hope my kids don't listen to this someday because they're going to come back and get me but yeah. um He's, uh, you know, he's, he's happy to do what he's doing now. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm sure that he will either, you know, head back to college or, um, or, or, you know, I always joke. So, so when he was 14, he got certified for welding just because he was okay. bored and wanted to do something. And we were like trying to find him things to do. So yeah. he, he was in welding class with all these really tough neck people. And he, I had to like drive in there and drop them off. And all these guys were riding their Harleys to the welding class. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. Um, so he got certified for welding and I bring that up because it's like, to me, he's the son. He won't only be sitting in that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. 
he'll be like the guy who went out and scrounged up all the materials and welded the pot and, to put the gold in. Yeah, and then he'll sit beautiful. in it, you know, yes. he's, just, he's, he's just, and he's amazing in that regard. And he does live kind of a blessed life. Um, and then my daughter, you know, who's 16 and she's still in her high school journey and is an incredible student and she's an incredible artist. Um, so she is so gifted in, in every regard with sculpture and uh, coloring, drawing, painting. Uh, we do a lot of arts and crafts together. I'm a really tactile, hands-on kind of guy. I'm a tinker. I like to build a lot of things. Okay. Um, all my daughters, all my sons have learned how to use power tools and build and you know, they do everything with me and, and they all learn to cook and do those other skills too. So, um, I kind of got off track here, but my point is they were all raised in the same household. They all learned these life skills. And my goal was always to make sure they were self-sufficient and I'm going to give a lot of that to my wife. She's Midwestern. And, you know, I took cues from her on, being, I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you know I probably came raised in a more of a touchy feely uh, mm-hmm. household, and mm-hmm. it was that was one of the clashes for my wife and I, where I'm like, yeah, you know they'll be fine, you know, and she's like, nope, we're gonna set rules, and this is what we're mm-hmm. like, like when they're in when they're in first grade, they're gonna be making their own lunch. We're not gonna make it for them anymore. I'm like, okay, and it's like when they're third grade. <laughs> They're doing their own laundry. You know, they're going to put their clothes down. They're going to do them. They're going to learn how to use the machine. I'm like, okay. You know, like at the time I was like, well, we could do it for them. That's no big deal. Um, But looking back, each of those was a great step to now. um, We gave each of them some money to get off into college if they chose to do that. And that was a seed. And then the rest of them is up to them and they're all doing it. So, um, so anyway, so they're yeah. very similar. I mean, they're all raised the same. They all chose different journeys. Yeah. And my last two just um, needed a little uh, encouragement in their in their journey. And 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 I don't know why. And that's you know going to this other piece of as a parent, as a father, looking back and going like, God, did I did I fail? Where did I go yes. wrong? What did I do yes. wrong? Let me. Wh- how much of this do I own? You know, it's like you know, what, what am I capable of continuing so let, let, to you know, go? Yeah. I wanted to interject and because I want to make sure we touch on this because you, I, I wrote down you as a parent, you have had the full gamut of the parental experience, I believe, or a good, a good, like the, like the, you had the traditional experience. I think we hope for as an easy well-mannered child and i don't mean that from a place of that's a the, better trust child me there were times child. where it wasn't easy <clears throat> like the day he turned no, no. 18 he went out and bought vaping devices and wanted a yes. tattoo and already paid for it we were like not in our household if you move <laughs> out you can do <laughs> yes. whatever the hell you want <laughs> yes but, you know, fair enough well in fact, I was... give me the vaping device i'm throwing it away he's like but i paid for it i'm like yeah that kind of sucks for you doesn't it so <laughs> 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 Thank you for showing that. I think, well, I think is that in America, we have this sort of did well mentality, like your, your kids had the, you know, from the, from the, the, the traditional hoped for experience in America, I believe yeah. yeah, is, you know, my kids did well, you had that experience. You've had the, the son who dropped out. Right. Yeah. And then now yeah. you have the son that's, or the daughter that's more of on the extreme feeling some extreme emotions, yeah, right? Yeah. And, you know, with the suicide and such. And I'm not trying to downplay that at all. I, I, but I just, as a parent, I think you have had you and your wife. And I mean, as a family, you've had the full, like this full arc of experience. And I think it's beautiful. And I, what I love, and I'm more and more struck by it, right. Is that how you and I know we know older parents who are frustrated with their kids still, and their kids could be 40 or 50. Right. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, when are yeah. we going to, when are what, like the sooner we can learn to embrace and our love and support our kids path as God has laid it out. Yeah. Right. Or higher power or source or the universe. And understanding that it's your child's path. It's not the parent's path. And I think that's yes. the hardest part is, and I, I had talked, I know you, you and I had talked about acceptance, which is truly accepting, you know, what they want for their path. Um, yes. And being okay with that. You know, like when my son 
was working and, you know, we were doing COVID. He's a senior in high school. He was coming up on his 18th birthday and we were working through like GED or something. And he was, you know, we just sat down with him. We're like, you know, let's just call it what it is. You're, (laughs) you don't want to go to school, you know? And, and as much as we want you to at least get a GED so you can go to college later or just graduate, it's like, you're almost there. You know, it's like, it ain't going to happen. It's like, you're not showing up for class and let's just call it what it is. And it was such a relief for me to not have to then fight that, to to, worry about, are you going to school? Why aren't you going to school? Don't you know what this means? And (laughs) life is, ah, you know, yes. So, okay. So you're turning 18 in a month. I hear you want to drop out. That's fine. So let's find a place for you to live and you can work full time and you do your thing. And yeah. it was like, wow, that was like, just like a massive weight lifted. And uh, six months later, he's, he's, he's adulting, man. He's doing great. You know, it's beautiful. I want to say to you, and you were just about to touch on this, but I want to, I want to make sure that we address the, the, the pull, the full palpable internalized emotional feelings that, and I wrote this down from our previous conference conversation, the worst part quote is feeling shitty as a parent, you feel like you failed, yeah. right? And did you try this? Did you try that? All these questions. And it's the and, realization and, and, that you don't have the skills to help your kids anymore. Like when your kids are five, you know, you can teach them how to ride a bike and you can, you know, things like that. And then as you, they yeah. get older, I mean, as parents, you're like, you feel like you're Superman and Superwoman. It's like, hey, no matter what comes up, we're, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, to get to a point where it's like, I don't like, I feel worthless. It's like, shit. I mean, my, my son is struggling <laughs> and my daughter, it's like, how can I not help them? How can I not just sit down with them now and talk to them and help them? And you, you have to just you have to accept it's like this is where we need other people to come in and we have to you know trust the professionals and we have to really seek some help and then and be a part of it but to recognize it's like i can't do this alone my wife and i can't do this alone and and yeah you feel like you're giving up i mean but you know it is it's beautiful looking back to see how great my son is doing and i i'm hopeful that will be the same for my daughter's journey you know she has she has more good moments now than she has bad moments yeah. but you know she shared with us a while ago she just doesn't trust herself there's some impulsivity mm-hmm. there and some really dark thoughts that you know at this point the best thing we can do is keep her in a sanitized environment so that she doesn't you know create any more issues i mean i i shared before and i'll say it again i mean our number yeah. one job as a parent is to keep our kids safe I just yeah. never thought it would be keeping my kids safe from themselves. Mm. And I, I don't anywhere in any parenting manual ever. I never just thought that would be a part of it. I was ready for, you know, bong hits and sex and crashing cars and all that. I mean, all <laughs> yes. the worst things I could think about in all my head. All the worst things you could think And I of never, them. never imagined suicidality and self-harm and mm outright aggression of my son towards my my wife and Mm. you know things like that it was like wow how do i cope with that you know um and in the midst of all that you know i lost my dad i lost my sponsor of 15 years Mm. um my mom decided to move away when my dad passed it was just this like storm last year and i i literally thought i was gonna lose my shit a couple times and so but as a dad (laughs) is the the leader of the house i'm like dude i'll just hold it together but there were some really yeah. bad moments where you know i just uh I, I i didn't necessarily crumble but it was great to have a wife that is so strong mm-hmm. and i could just go to her and she just hold me <laughs> and and the same was true coming back there were moments even today where you know one of us is just like i can't i can't take it it's like it's so mm-hmm. much so we mm. have each other for that. And I've got, yeah. you know, you and other outlets and, and being open and sharing has been really helpful and learning that there are so many uh, parents that are going through similar things. The suicidality is not unique today. Mm. It is unfortunately just really front and center with a lot of these young kids. And it's, 
we just have to get down to their level and work with them on it. You know what? God bless your daughter for um, communicating as well. Like, Hey, these are thoughts that I have and, and, or whatever. It sounds like to be a state of a state of vulnerability and openness about it. I don't, I don't, am I seeing that right with her? Yeah. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Well, and that has been part of her journey. I mean, uh, back in, I guess about a year ago when this all started to happen, you know, it was like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, you know, she's, I mean, just to, to set the stage, she is so engaging with everyone. Everyone loves her. We love her. She's bubbly. She's, she does well in school. She, um, you know, she's in, in, in any age group. She, you know, she, yeah. she was volunteering. She was, you know, there weren't any signs of, of this. This was something that was like, like what? Like we were just yeah, shocked, wait. you know, yeah. she's always been the, the, the most charming person in our mm. household, hands down. Um, I had shared with you and I'll tell this story again, like, like, early on in first grade, you go do the parent teacher thing. And you're always like, Oh, my son's advanced. My daughter's advanced. The kids, <laughs> the t- parents love my daughter and I love my kids. Yes. But, but literally the, it wasn't like you'd sit down and be like, Oh yeah, we, we love your daughter. She's really great. Teachers and the administration was literally chasing us down saying, Oh my gosh, you like, we don't know what you've done with her, but she's amazing. And that, that started early on and it was always with her everywhere you know through church and everything so when this started to happen um at first it was like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine then the attempt happened and then she kind of shut down and she's like you know don't talk to me i don't, I don't want to deal with this and you know she literally went to the darkest place possible she's just like i'm just waiting when i get a chance to do this again um mm. i don't mm. you know You know, often she would say, I don't, I know I'm not going to live to be older than 18 and I don't want to, I don't want to burden anyone. I don't want to burden you. So to see that, and then now in her journey where she's got moments, she's like, I want to live. I want to go to college. You know, you know, she loves her dog. We got a good dog during COVID. She's like, Walter, I got to love Walter. (laughs) Um, so in those moments are like 99% of the time, but there are times mm-hmm. she's still like, I, I, I'm not, it's not more, you know, I still don't want to be here. Um, mm-hmm. and, the, and that's the part I don't understand. That's where I have yeah. to, I have to let just go, give right? up. Yeah. To yeah. let go. And I just have to bring in the right people and we're trying mm-hmm. therapy and medications and everything possible. And, uh, and, and it's a long journey and, and she's not, broken there's nothing to fix she's just she's got you know Mm -hmm. it's just an event and a a a journey in her life right now where you know we just have to work through this um and and accept her right where she is for now i mean i've learned so much about mental health that you know years ago i would have dismissed it as like just get over it just let me get a bigger boot and kick you in the ass and (laughs) like what the fuck is your problem your life is great you know Yes. You know, you just try to get out of your homework or whatever it is, you know, right. Whatever. And now, to be, oh yeah. God. So for me, I think of some of the events in my life where people have said, Oh, my kid's struggling. And I'm just like, well, what did you do? You know, you're not parenting correctly. You know, right. no wonder about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, Oh my gosh, I need to go make amends to some of these people. I and hear even, you. And even the fact that I didn't say anything, I just thought in my head, it's like, okay, I'm glad I don't have that problem. You know, my kids are all perfect, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and now having the understanding, it's like, this has nothing to do with the environment or the child. It's mm. just, it is what it is. It's like a feeling, you know, the mm. brain is so powerful. I mean, you listen to and read every self-help thing. It'll tell you power of the mind. You can make your mind do anything, you know? set yourself on these great paths and you can achieve anything you want. Well, I think the opposite, unfortunately, of that is true too. Mm -hmm. Your mind is capable of directing you in a place that's really dark. So we Mm -hmm. just have to find out why. Almost the inverse of that, the exact inverse, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not, you know, it's just understanding that embracing it where it's at and then working with it. And, and, um, and, and it's interesting. Yeah. Go 
Uh, I was going to say, I was just thinking, you, you made me think of like this illusion that one's better than the other two, right? Because being trapped in the, in the, I can do anything mode. And then why am I not or stuck in never having enough success enough? This can be as mentally almost, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't mean to, I think you might get what I'm saying, but uh, no, I, I get what you're saying. It's like, yeah, we inherently, we live in a society where we rate things, we stack things. We, you know, we, we, we look at things, you know, like, um, like a ranking. And so yeah. when you have, you know, in a, in a family and in a, in a partnership and a marriage, you have to just have constant acceptance and you let go of everything as it occurs mm. because you can't change it. And anything that is coming up, don't worry about it because you, you, you know, we have. So the one thing my sponsor um, and, you know, praise him. And unfortunately he did pass last year, but I, the yeah. thing that I always carry with me from him was there is so little in this world that we have any control over. I mean, yes. absolutely so little and, and yes. most of our life, I think we believe we can control things yes. or that there is something, but certainly the past, just forget it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's gone. <laughs> so, and the future, it hasn't even occurred yet. So it's like the yeah. DBT skill of just like only dealing with what's real, what you can see, what you can hear. Um, yeah. So the future is like, who knows? And so right now, just be present. And so as these events occur with your 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 spouse your partner your children this is just to tackle them head on right as they occur and um and it does and each each of my children has a different path i address them uniquely yeah. for each of them sure as a parent you have certain skills and yeah. things that you know rules you put in place to be consistent but at the end of the day every moment is unique every yeah. moment thank you for that I Yes, thank you for that. That will do it for part two. Stay tuned for part three. Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time with me today. As someone who is committed to growth and service to this world, I so appreciate your willingness to come with me, go within, and serve our world through change. If you found value in this podcast and you know someone who can use this message, Share this episode with them. Share it so our mission can be achieved one episode at a time. And of course, subscribe so you can hear more. And lastly, for more resources on what has helped me on my journey and can help you on yours, go to belove.media forward slash resources. That's B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. Thank you again for listening.